everyone, this is Jenny from Germany, <laughs> from a small town in Germany. I'm planning to do this podcast today um, quite shortly, briefly, um, due to two reasons. The first is that we have a meeting for knitting in an hour, and I want to go there, of course. <laughs> I want to um, have fun with the others, to knit something together, and to eat tasty stuff <laughs> and also I'm not entirely sure how long my cell phone is gonna last the battery is quite low it's on the line but I'm, I'm not entirely sure if it's loading properly um, when I'm doing a video in the meantime yeah shortly about me um, I'm Jenny as I said I'm 27 and I'm living uh, with my boyfriend and our two cats here in a small town. And I have the label Jodrush Designs. Uh, Jodrush is very similar similar to J, uh, J. Rush or Jennifer Rush. You all know her, uh, prob uh, probably <laughs> at least. Um, but that's why I'll pronounce it in German, so you don't get confused. Like why is she? using the same name, this is stupid. Yeah, our names are quite similar. Uh, I end with an with another ending, my, my real name, but it's... Um, I, I cutted it, so it's nicer. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'm doing knitting, I do crochet, I sometimes spin, but it's really rare at the moment, especially. And um, I also have a blog, um, which is not yet filled as much as I'd like to. And I also have a shop which is not open yet. And today I want to show you um, what I have finished. That's not that much, but yeah, I want to show it to you. I want to show what's in progress at the moment. Um, one project is already in the back, but it's, uh, it's a, pro a mystery project, so you can't know too much about it yet but you will get to know about it more later when when it's published and you can see it. Yeah, uh, let's start with the finished things. I can't show you them here in the camera. That's due to uh, the fact that they are already gone. <laughs> they are uh, at their uh, almost places now. Um, the first one is a pair of socks of which I can't uh, insert a photograph. I think I showed it to you last time when it was partly finished, but um, I'll insert again a picture when I just started knitting and had half of the cuff or something like this. Um, and yeah, it's finished. It's already sent to the, the partner um, I had. We have a, a round of people that um, knit socks for each other and you don't know from whom you will get socks in the next um, round. So. I think we are a little bit over 40 persons this time who are uh, in this round and I um, manage all of this so maybe we could also manage it to do it more globally or at least European scale. We have some um, taking um, are participating from um, Switzerland and from Austria but I think in, in the European scales, the, the the range for the the prices for the packaging and for the shipping are not um, that different. So if you're interested in uh, participating, please just ask me. <laughs> yeah. Um, then I finished um, a cowl I did. That's a pattern which is not yet available in. English, I guess. I'm not entirely sure. You, you <laughs> just heard that sound. That was my cell phone. Um, I think it's not translated yet. If someone is interested in it being translated, please ask me. Um, if I see that there's interest, I'm really keen on to finishing it in English because it's not that much work. Yeah, and I show you the picture now. It's really, really bright and colorful. 
let's say it that way. It's really um, an eye catcher, I would say. And if you haven't seen the pattern on this um, knitting um, thing, <laughs> then look at the other picture I just uh, show you now. This is what it looks like if you use two colors that are um, having a good contrast to each other and are in themselves not too wild. Um, and now I'll show you <laughs> again the, the bright one, the neon one. And yeah, if you have seen the pattern once, then you can actually find it in the other pattern as well. Um, yeah, that, those are the two things I finished, which are not here anymore. And everything else is just in progress or planned. Um, I want to show you the yarns um, I received. I received lots of yarns, so if you're interested in um, looking at some yarns I bought, you would have to switch to the German podcast. Um, I think roughly after the half of the video it will be okay. Um, and then you would see the yarns, or maybe a little, even a little bit more than a half. But um, yeah, I knitted something <laughs> in the meantime, and I think I can show you even a few yarns. Um, I'm not entirely sure if my cell phone is now focusing again on the points where it should be focusing on, because it didn't do it for the German video. And I'm really, really annoyed about that. So um, maybe I'll have to contact the um, company from the cell phone. But I didn't want to do it before this video now. Um, just well to finish the video and to publish it for you. <sighs> now, now I have yarn stuck in a progress keeper I put in here to make it more heavy. So you can see the actual pattern and the actual yeah, way of it looking later. So um, I pro uh, continued on knitting on my Winner to My Soul cardigan from Jorge Locatelli. And now we see if it... I think it is. I think you see the stitches sharply, so <laughs> it's back into uh, autofocus again. Yay! Um, yeah, and those stitch markers are here to make it more heavy so you can see the actual pattern. I knitted on it uh, quite a lot um, the last days, but as the pattern is so stretchy, it stretches and uh, it, it um, well, it's, um, I don't know the, the, the English word, it's just, um, yeah, it'll ruffle like this and you have to, um, I think, block it after it's finished, um, which I will do, uh, but there's not en uh, enough of time left before I can close this um, to the, the uh, or close the arms and then I have to knit for like a long time in stuck knit stitch on the body and also the sleeves will be done first and after that I will block it so it's gonna be in weeks probably <laughs> if I'm not knitting on it, on it um, monogamously. Is that a word? I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. This is a yarn from a friend of mine whom I'm uh, visiting in a few moments, um, who's giving the knitting um, meeting. That sounds weird. Um, and the yarn looks like this. It is um, a jeans uh, yarn, which is marred in itself. Um, yeah, and I'm having it in my minion pocket. <laughs> I love minions, as you all know. Maybe not all, because I haven't talked uh, you about it in the English podcast, I guess, but everyone who's German may have seen it already. Then I knitted on um, <laughs> a wee tiny bit on a, a half mitten. One is already finished, and it's finished since <laughs> weeks, <laughs> at least weeks. This is the first mitten, it's already finished. It's knitted with uh, a yarn that has 600 meters per 100, more than 600 meters per 100 gram, uh, but I uh, hold it doubled so it's um, more firm and yeah, it's just um, better for, for warming your hands actually. Um, I think it's really nice because it fits to every cloth you wear. 
Um, yeah, this is the first one. The second one is just started. I haven't done much on it yet, but at least the ribbing is finished. So I'm having it here in a um, nice um, needle cozy, and yeah. this is how far I've, I've gotten so far. So it's just uh, 20 rows of um, knit one through the back loop and um, purl one, and then it's just two rounds of stock and stitch. So I have to continue it. It, it will be finished really fast once I work on it. Maybe I'll do it this evening, I have to see. Um, it's a little bit depending on how well I could work in the evening, as my boyfriend is attending uh, to the firefighters he's involved in. They are just practicing for, yeah, if something happens, and they would have to know what they have to do. Yeah. And then I, oh, it's, it's here, so I can show you quickly. Um, I did a little bit of crochet on a um, project that is not that um, that I can't sh show properly at the moment because it's a secret project um, and I'll just hold it in the camera for a few seconds so this is what you can see um, more of it once it's published um, I am not sure if it's published in English, I don't think so, but it has a chart. So if you're interested in, in doing it later, then you can use the chart. Everything else is just for further explanation. And if there's something you don't understand, I'm here to help, as I'm always. So yeah, and then I knitted a few rows, but just a few rows, on a pair of socks. I started. Um, I think when the World Championship of Football or Soccer or where you come from, depending, uh, most of the world says football and just some say soccer, so for me it's football. In German you also say Fußball, which is close to football, so yeah, I'll stay to that. Um, and yeah, I started them this time and I started the ribbing and I was finished with the ribbing and then I um, started a nice knitting pattern here but as you can see it's not really showing very much um, this is a pattern of my own it is called the Fuschino pattern um, but I didn't like it too much but I thought it would be nice if, if I have it here as a, a nice border and now I just continue with knitting and stocking and stitch except for the stitches that I um, already purled before in the, the upper part. Uh, I continue on um, purling them on the uh, calf now as well. And I will continue for a while, I think at least twice the size. So this more at least. Um, it's a size 39 in European sizes. So yeah, uh, there's a lot to do. Then I'll do my Sichelferse, which is the heel um, I invented, and which is also not translated in English, I'm sorry. Um, and I'll knit, um, just knit on the foot probably, or just those few um, pearl stitches on the top will stay, but everything else will be just stock and stitch. Yeah, that's it so far for knitting. I don't know why I talked for so long in the German podcast. I talked for one hour and 25 minutes in total. Um, I don't have too mu uh, so much to show you here. Maybe it's because I'm speaking um, English. I can't speak as good as I would like to. So I can't fill everything uh, with some words. And of course, I've shown a lot of yarn in the podcast. Um, one thing I can show you for sure is the designers magazine in which I'm involved. So this is it. I've already sold all of my um, magazines and I already bought a few from a friend um, to sell it for her. Yeah, and I'll show it just from, from behind here. Those are my pages. The patterns are not available yet. Um, 
as singles. I'll wait until every uh, magazine is sold out and then I will publish it. Yeah, and those are the two patterns. I just, um, they are easier than my usual patterns, so it's really, um, it's uh, brought all down to one page each, um, which is really short for me. I usually do more complex patterns and they just need more space as they have like a few charts or something. But it's also nice to um, learn how to write short patterns, which still look really good. Yeah, then I'll show you um, the yarn I can show you because I know it's available in other countries as well. Um, and yeah, I bought this yarn in Dortmund. Dortmund is a small, well, it's not so small, but it's depending on where you, uh, what you, you know about Germany. I mean, you know Cologne, that's a large city, or you know Berlin, that's a large city, or Frankfurt. But uh, Dortmund is also large, but not as large as like Cologne. Um, and there was a trade fair where I went to, but it was a, a trade fair for everyone um, who wanted to, um, to, who is creative. It's called the Creativa, well, which is from creative, just with an A at the end. Um, and I found a nice shop there, which is from the Netherlands. And she uh, had really nice yarns. I haven't seen in Germany before. I have seen them later on in uh, at another trade fair where I was. But uh, until that day, I haven't heard about it, this yarn and of course I'll show it to you in a second. I bought me some really nice yarns from Fiber Space. I think you've heard of it. And this is the yarn I, I also saw at the other trade fair. And it's really nice. I love these colors. I bought them as combinations, so I have the two here together. Um, which will give a really nice contrast. I think it it will be some brioche knitting or um, yeah, well, something where it really pops up if you combine those colors, or just um, um, uh, slip stitches would also look good on it. Uh, Vivacious four ply is, is a um, yarn called the um, type of yarn. Um, it's a hundred percent superwash merino, and it has about four hundred yards. Per 100 grams, um, and you can wash it as at, at 30 degrees or um, 86 uh, degrees Fahrenheit. Um, it's really funny because I, I saw this in the German podcast as well. Uh, those yarns are both um, composed of th the same merino superwash. Um, they have the same length, they are basically the same, but the blue one is supposed to be washed at 30 degrees and the green one can be washed at 40 degrees, so it's really <laughs> weird. Maybe uh, those um, labels are a little different, maybe, uh, no you can't, um, yeah, maybe you can see it somehow, they are a little different and maybe this is um, just a change in something and they, yeah, they changed the instructions a little, but I love the combination. I mean, it's like the green shawl. <laughs> I'm totally into um, those um, really strong green colors like lime or moss green. So this is totally a thing for me at the moment. And the blue, <laughs> of course, it's so nice. And together with it, it pops even more, I guess. Um, yeah, those are the first two I want to show you. And here we have the second two. It's the same yarn. Um, oh, I just didn't tell you the colors. Um, the green one was a 6 to 7 avocado and the blue one was 607 deep aqua and I have those two also. I love the combination. I'm just usually not that much into brown except for this pullover where I really liked it. Um, but normally I'm not so much into browns. But in this combination with this purple, whatever thing, gish <laughs> thing, um, it has a little bit of pink in it too. Um, I love it. I'm so in love with this combination. 
Um, I don't know what I'll do with it, but I will find out, I guess. Uh, the purple is called, is number six to eight blueberry M's, mm -hmm. and we have the brown, which is 603 silver and bronze. So, really nice. I don't know where silver is in there. Bronze, I would, uh, would be fine with, but silver? Mm -hmm. I don't think so. <laughs> and I bought some other yarn in this um, at this trade fair, and I have to see which ones are the combinations I wanted. I think I already have them. Um, I bought two combinations. Uh, those are really nice sock yarns. They um, are 50 gram skeins, so um, perfect for uh, for actually to if you are not knitting two large socks for two pairs of socks, which are maybe. Um, maybe they, I'll do two pairs in the same pattern with the colors inverted. That would be a nice idea. Uh, the yarn is called Socks Dear from, I think it's Co-op Knits, but I'm not sure. It may be also Coop Knits, which I just heard from, um, from Annette from the uh, podcast The Nerd Knits. Which is now in German again. Um, mm -hmm. I she started with English and then she switched to German again, and I think she stayed at German, but she can speak English. So if you have question of her, you can ask her. Um, the blue one here is the color one one three topaz. They are all na named after minerals, which I really like because I'm a geoscientist. <laughs> and the other one is a gray with blue and purple included. Um, so it's really marked, really nice. It's the color 109. I think it's your light and not low light. <laughs> um, yeah, I think it's an eye at the beginning. And I have another combination here, which is this one. And I also think this pops up really nice. It's just um, similar to the um, Fiber Spades yarn I've shown you before, just the blue is really a lot darker. But it'll always uh, it will also be a nice combination for sock knitting. The blue one is one, two, five lapis, and the green one, which is a little bit more yellowish than the green one you've seen before, is uh, one one four peridot. Um, yeah, those are the yarns I bought. Then. Is there something else I want to tell you? I'm not, I can't put the microphone on because I'm um, on. Um, <laughs> I just have one one inlet for the um, for the headphones for the um, ear things. What are they called? Uh, headphones, microphones, and um, the charging. It's all coming from the same um, spot. So yeah, I can't um, do it right now. Um, this is why I have to talk louder and why I have to um, progress it in the. Well, yeah, I have to, to work on it um, on Adobe Premiere to make it louder for you so you can actually understand what I say. Um, yeah, then I received a book I pre ordered. I pre ordered it in Germany um, after I had seen the pictures of the models in there. I talk about the interpretations book, number six. It's available now. It is different from the others, L really much different. The others are, uh, I don't think they're actually themed. Maybe they are, but I haven't seen the overall theme, but interpretations volume six definitely is. It is only with black and white and grey um, models in there. So you don't have um, any colour involved. Which makes it hard for me because I'm not an editor of black and white combinations usually. Um, and I wasn't sure if I wanted to have it, but I have the first five books and I it took me so much effort to get all of them that I was um, thinking I need it. And then I checked for the um, projects on Ravelry and I realized that they are really lovely. 
just uh, in different colors. When I see them in different colors, it's for me. I can imagine better if it's something I would like to do or not. And in black, it's not so much like uh, this shawl here. It's really nice. I really love it. But it's just not the color I would go for. It's similar to the um, Suburban Wrap. Yeah, it's called Resolution Wrap, so it's <laughs> really close. There's a sweater in there I really love. Um, I would like to do. And there's also a vest I would like to do, but I would do it with long arms, um, because short arms are not looking good on me. Or no arms are not looking good at me. Yeah, and I'm happy to have it here and to put it next to the other books which are lying there, they're just not uh, in the, um, no, not, just not sorted in yet. Yeah. Um, then I can explain you something more. I was at the trade fair H and H in Cologne, which is a trade fair for, um, people who want to sell something later, like I want to sell yarn to you, to everyone, and I have to, would have to buy my yarn from somewhere, and well, those persons, those wholesale um, companies, I would say, um, are there to, <laughs> are there to present themselves, yeah. And I went there as well, and I really enjoyed it. I was there for two days. Um, I traveled by train, like four hours per route. Um, and I stayed over overnight at an Airbnb place. And well, on the second day I went back. And I have so much uh, inspiration from this weekend, and so much joy, and so much fun, and so much input. Yeah, that's basically the right word, I guess. It it's been a lot of input and I'm still not entirely sure how I will handle it, so I'll s just start working on it. Um, yeah, Most of it is not interesting for you at the moment, as I'm not, or I haven't bought any yarn yet, which I will, or haven't ordered any yarn yet, which I will do in the next few days or weeks. I have to see how much time I have for it, and um, I have to check if the camera is still working. Um, there have been a few things that are interesting for, like, all of us. Wait a second. Um, yeah. Um, first of all, there was really nice blocking um, pins with with um, wires, blocking wires, um, which come from Israel. I really like the idea. Um, the sets are quite expensive. I've checked that after I did the German video. Um, but they are really, really nice, um, and I have to see if I could, would be able to sell them on my own um, here in Germany, or if it's not a possibility for me, I will see, and um, yeah, you will see if you want them. But I'm sorry, I'm to totally sorry for that. <laughs> the, the night was just a little bit short. Um, but they are something I will definitely buy. I have those um, wires from... Uh, I don't know the word for it. Um, if you want to connect two metal things um, with a connection that will hold forever, you will heat it up really much with some more metal and then it will be added together. You know what I mean. In German it's called Schweizen. Um, I don't know the word for it now. And um, yeah, I have those wires which are, con are used for the connection, so which are burned actually or heated up. Um, I have them, but they are just like a little bit flexible, like you can, um, they are a, a meter long, I guess, and you can make like half of a circle of it. If you do more than it will probably break or it will be at least deformed and not go back to the structure it had before. And those cables here, those wires, those um, blocking wires are, and that's really nice. Um, I will check on that for you. Then I have to. That's not good now. Um, I had some have some more information from you. Um, I'm not sure if it's the same name for you, or if it's not. 
I think it's not. Um, in Germany we have the... Well, they sell the companies is called Net Pro. But I think in America it's, for example, Net Pix. But it's the same uh, needles and so on. I'm not entirely sure. Um, or Nitta Sprite is also similar to it. I'm not sure. Uh, in Germany we say Nitpo, so if you google it, nitpo.eu, then you should probably find it also in English, and then you'll see uh, the needles, and maybe you can compare it to them, uh, the, the ones you have at your places. And yeah, they have some new needles they invented. Um, they are derived from the Sing needle set, um, but they have small um, the color is not through the entire needle just at parts and at those parts you can measure it's like a ruler in shorter um, so you can use your needle to measure your socks or whatever you are working on um, I prefer the zing um, double pointed needles I don't like the circular needles I sold mine to the the ex um, girlfriend of my boyfriend's brother. In German we have a word for it. Probably you'd also have, but I don't know. It. Um, then they also um, um, invented a new set of needles which is called ginger. It's a combination of this normal um, wood. Uh, it's called Birkenholz. I will um, write the uh, English words below, so you know what I mean. It's, it's Birkenholz and Treibholz combination, so um, yeah, you can see it down there and then you see the combination. And it's not colored, it's natural color and it just has some um, um, co uh, cover, so it's really nice and shiny and slippery to use. Um, which I really like about this um, set of needles is that the, the map that is um, given with the needle set is now not only a map, it's it's also a magma a magnet board on which you can put your knitting charts or crochet charts, whatever, uh, and which has magnets on it and so you can fix it and you also have a magnet ruler to um, yeah, check on which line you actually are. That's really nice. And also they have those um, row counter rings. They sold them before but they were made for the Asian market and most of the Asian people are smaller than U European or African or like everybody else. <laughs> uh, Asian people are smaller than most of the people. Um, and so the ring size was really small and even some um, really skinny German persons couldn't get them over their fingers just because the, the knuckles are too big. And so they changed it um, to European scales, um, and now we have ring sizes up to, I think it's uh, 21.4 millimeters in um, in width. I don't know the... <laughs> I should know it. It's not the radius, it's the double of the radius. It's like the diameter. That's what I was looking for. Um, yeah, and I uh, could try it, and I tried it on my uh, thumb, and it really fitted well. So um, it's large. So I would usually wear it on a ring finger or something, but maybe for knitting on on the thumb, and there it fitted really nicely. So I'm thinking about getting one in the future. They are not really cheap, but <laughs> I will see. Um, yeah, and at this knit um, pool. Um, um, place there on this fair trade. They also gave me some um, something to um, yeah to take it home with me, which is a, which is a nice small pocket or bag or yeah project bag. I would say it is quite large. Um, <laughs> it's larger than it actually looked like when I first saw it, and it ha also has you can't really see it I guess. It has two pockets in here uh, for stitch markers or needles or cables or something. Um, and I love this um, 
pattern of the, the fabric here. It's really nice. Um, at the moment leaves or flowers are totally um, en vogue. <laughs> Uh, I saw that on the on the trade fair as well. It was so flowery; you couldn't see anything else than flowers. But I like flower clothing, and yeah, I'm just a flower type. And I also got a uh, shawl stick. That's shawl pin stick. That's what they call it in in English. For me, in German, it's. Uh, Tuchnadel, which refers to shawl pin, shawl needle. Yeah, you just insert it in the in the fabric and it will hold on its own. Yeah, I also received a large bag from Lana Grossa, which you might have heard of when you look uh, when you're watching the Zia Woods um, podcast. She's um, a Lana Grossa fan, <laughs> obviously, uh, and she buys yarn when she's in Germany, or her mother brings it with her, or something like this. Yeah, and they gave me this really large, nice bag, and there was a little bit of yarn in there. Um, I'll show it to you now. There's also everything um, info material I got. Um, I just put it in here, and once I have time to go through all of it, I will go to look at it, but not. Um, Today. Yeah, and I had this two sock yarns in here, which is um, Alana Grosse yarn, and it's called Kashmir Trend. Yeah, it's focusing, that's so nice. <laughs> I think it was just broken the last time I wanted to do a video, so the Germans, yeah, every one of you who is German and is watching this video can be happy because he sees everything sharply. Really nice. <laughs> um, it is made of 70% wool, 25% polyamide, and 5% cashmere. Is polyamide and nylon the same? I don't think so. I think it's maybe it could be the same chemically, but nylon is a patented um, way of producing this polyfiber. Is that correct? <laughs> I, uh, I'm thinking about it at the moment because I want to sell yarn, which comes from England, and um, it's declared as nylon, and I'm not sure if I, in Germany, if I can, can write nylon or if I should write polyamide. I have to check it. I think most of the others say nylon, so probably I'll stay with that as well. Um, yeah, those ones were in there, and there was another skein of a yarn, which I like more and more every time I get it out of this bag. At first I was thinking, oh, it's really rough, the first touch. Um, but I think my hands were really dry. Now they are um, n nicely creamed and yeah, just not dry anymore. And this yarn feels so much softer today. That's really weird. Um, it's from also from Anna Grotza. Uh, Slow Wool Lino is, is the name of it. Maybe you can see it. Um, 400 meters per 100 grams. And it's made of 85% um, virgin wool and merino, um, so it's soft. And it also has 15% linen, which makes it a little more, bit more uh, rough. And from the um, view, like a tweak yarn, maybe you could. Yeah, I think you can see it quite nicely. I'm not sure what I will do with them. Maybe also socks. I was thinking about something else when I uh, had it in my hand with the dry hands. But now I think it's really nice, and I think once it's washed, it will be even softer. Probably they made it as a um, as a non polyacrylic, polyamidic <laughs> uh, version of um, of their yarn, so we don't have any uh, plastic um, involved, just natural materials. That might be a possibility. I think this is also cotton, so um, probably. Uh, they are trying on um, getting rid of all the plastic, which is nice, which is a really nice idea. Um, yeah, and I think I will do something nice with it. And I received another yarn, but it wasn't mine, it wasn't in my goodie bag, but I exchanged one of the uh, designer's magazines 
with a friend, a YouTuber friend, which is um, who's called um, Strick mir was. Um, it's a German podcast, and um, yeah, he um, exchanged one of those magazines with those two yarns he had in his goodie bag. And the colors are definitely more woman colors. <laughs> I can understand that he didn't want to have them. Um, mine maybe have been uh, would have been something more for him, although there's also a little bit of uh, pink, red things in there. But they are really nice as well. So uh, this is going to be fun. It's so soft with the cashmere. I love cashmere. It's really nice. So uh, I thought my podcast would be really short. As I said at the beginning, it's not as short as I think, I guess. Um, I have no idea for how long I'm doing this now, because I don't know where the... Ah, uh, it's on the top there. I think it is... Long, at least. I can't see it. It's, it's exactly at this um, height of the... Um, yeah, of my... Uh, of the box there, so it's white and it's exactly at this spot and I can't read it. I just see the, the red uh, uh, dot um, blinking at me all the time. <laughs> yeah, that's it from me, uh, from me for this week. Um, I don't know when I will be able to do another video. I just received um, gratefully the uh, extension of my master's thesis, so I have three more months to go which is really good because I was so back in time, not due to me, but due to the fact that I didn't receive all the data I need. So I have time until the 10th of July and then I'm finished. Um, yeah, And so maybe I'm, I will be able to do another podcast uh, in the next two weeks or something. I will yeah tell you about it and I thank you really much for listening to me this time. Um, and one thing I missed, um, at the fair trade, where I was, there was another podcaster from the, uh, from, I don't want to say anything wrong now. If it's the Georgia from, <laughs> from the US, then it's US, but maybe it also be, I think I heard something like Canada, but I'm not entirely sure now. It doesn't matter. I met another podcaster um, from Sweet Georgia Yarns and I really like the colors and the knitting and I already, um, well, we talked about doing YouTube videos and I saw um, her podcast and that she's really famous. She's having 12,000 followers. I just gained 4,000 until now. And uh, what I saw from the first view, I just haven't had a look in the videos, which I will look from the beginning because I'm a total monk and I have to look it in the right order, otherwise I'll get mad about it. Um, yeah, she has a really nice um, setting of her videos, so it's really professional and really nice. Um, and I'm looking forward to watch her videos. Um, I'm just on um, looking the Nerd Knits at the moment. Um, to get all t through all, and maybe I'll check on the Sweet Georgia um, podcast afterwards. I will see. Um, and yeah, it was really nice to meet her, and yeah, to meet all the others on the trade fair as well. So it was really nice um, to have some um, talking about what we actually do and how it's how it's going and so on. I thank you very much for watching. I said that already. <laughs> see you next time. Bye.